Hi guys, you know what? The human race is a klutz. What is a klutz? So I'm South African. Hello, South Africa. All right, and in our culture, Afrikaans culture in particular, there is this word called klutz, okay? It's basically somebody who grabs a glass, okay? And then all of a sudden, it's on the floor. We're not going to be breaking glasses for the sake of YouTube, okay? The human race is a klutz, a klutz, okay? Klutz. Because they keep picking things up and then they drop them, okay? And then they break. And then when they're done breaking, they're like, oh snap, who'd have thunk it? Wish we didn't do that. But it's already done. So today is the 5th of July. Apparently, allegedly, there's something happening over there in Switzerland, okay? Uh, and it's a little bit disturbing. They're opening up a wormhole into the other world, Lee. And I'm like, oh my goodness, Debra, why would you do that? Why do you want to interact with things that come through portals? You've seen in the movies that stuff never works out. So why do you think you're so different from the movies exactly, eh? Why? Why do you think you're so different from fictional movies? Because it turns out that these so far movies are our lives, eh? So because the human being is a klutz, the general human being is a klutz, they will go and think that they can pick up something fragile like a glass, and then just kind of throw it in the sky, you know what I mean? Throw it really high, and then juggle it, and then toss it apart left and right, and then put a tornado in it, and it will not break upon landing on the ground again. Okay. That's the human race over there, just a class. They don't know whether they're coming or going. So here it is that they're doing this funny thing by the Hadron Collider Collector thing, they're in the Hadron Place. Don't even know what it even means, okay? Particle physicals or particle physics or particle physical for the body because you need to go and check your prostate. Whatever. They're trying to mix hydron collider particles in the particle place. And I'm like, what's happening there in Switzerland? Somebody please tell me. I just believe that all these classy people are trying to throw a whole bunch of proverbial glass in the sky put them in a tornado and hope that just like this little over here mason jar, they're just going to land nicely in place, eh? Nicely in place, okay. So today they're doing an experiment that's potentially going to open a portal, otherwise known as a wormhole. I mean anything with the word worm in it, you can't trust it, eh? It's a worm. At the end of the day, what do worms do? They worm themselves in. So if you're going to open a wormhole, then you can understand that there's going to be things that are worming themselves into this place. But you know, we're human and everything we throw in the sky that is fragile somehow strangely lands gently on the floor. Okay. So with these guys and what they're doing, they're basically being clutches. Like human beings are clutches. We're such clutches that we drop babies on their heads. As if that's not bad enough. Now we're going to go and drop demons on their heads in our ecosystem. What in the world? I don't even really know what to do anymore, hey? So here it is that we're dealing with all of this experimentation with bad things that go bump in the night. Even Stephen Hawking, the biggest and baddest atheist in the world, may his soul not rest in peace since he did not repent and give his life to Jesus Christ. Stephen Hawking said, don't mess with that God particle. Whatever it is, that God particle, don't touch it. The biggest guy who went and convinced all of us that we all started with a big bang was like, don't mess with that God particle. Ironic. He wasn't even supposed to believe it exists since he's so atheistic. Anyway, that guy warned against being a klutz and we still carried on being klutzes. So I'm like, I mean, what's exactly going to happen over here? Are we going to just watch a whole bunch of really clever people, literally too clever for their own liking? Are we just going to watch them as the classes as they are? Fulfill, never mind Bible prophecy, but movie prophecy. How many times have you seen a funny experimentation on Hollywood television screens with medical science and then next thing there are zombies everywhere? How many times have you seen an experimentation in an outer space, galactic space? In the movie, and then they think there's a haunting on the ship. How many, guys? How many times have people opened wormholes in their houses using Ouija boards, and they think they're haunted?
it all the time. Literally, Hollywood says that you're being a klutz. You're being a klutz, okay? When you open a hole in the wall, not with a drill, but with magic. Or maybe with particles in a colada. Whatever you're doing, you're a klutz. And you're going to bring some filthy things on half the planet. But no, because they're clever, these theoretical physicist people, because they think they're cleverer than us, I mean really, they are going on right ahead to hit all of the human race with a pat on the head by being clutters, much to our demise, because there's nothing we can do about it. Nothing, okay? They keep on funding clutters to open portals and wormholes when in movies wormholes always cause the extinction of the human race. What are they doing? What they're doing is opening up what we call in Christianity the cosmos. The cosmos, the cosmos, you guys, they're opening the cosmos. How many of you in the new age and the occult have opened the cosmos? Tell me what happens, you guys. You know. Funny things come and they make bump in your night, hey? They disturb your sleep, hey? You think you're in control of your funny little wormhole in your house until you can't sleep and next thing you're committing suicide. You know people in the occult and you guys are small time klutzies, eh? Small time. So you do it in your own backyard and it affects your backyard life. But they're doing it not to the planet. Fifth of July, they in Switzy? And I'm like, you know what? No more am I ever going to buy Swiss chocolate again because they're being klutzers. I don't understand what's going on. I changed my mind. I'll keep buying chocolate because not everybody is guilty. But still, still. So here's this Hadron Collider colliding thing of particle physicals or something. Physical, like the physical. You're that. And they're busy with it, you know. Particle, physical or physics. And they're busy opening wormholes in the sky experimenting. And then we look at the Bible, because at the end of the day, the Bible is also not an authority, you know, you guys? Long if all else fails, but you go to the Bible, because you can't afford to go anywhere else. Because the human race is a class, so you can't believe all the random theories, you know? They're going to open wormholes. Have you seen The Walking Dead? Zombies everywhere. So, here it is that the Bible tells us in the book of the Lord in Revelation that there's going to be a season of time. When the Lord is going to open up the bottomless pit, that Apollyon or Abaddon is going to come down with a key and everything is going to be given into open Hades and death. And then all these like critters and like wormies and funny little creepy crawlies are going to come and be like, oh, look at me, I'm the size of a human being. And they're going to eat you alive, you know what I mean? Yeah. The day's going to come, so perhaps maybe by providence, soon is opening up like the clutch that it is, the bottomless pit. And it's going to bring all of Hades alive. It's going to bring all of death alive. And everything else that's in there that goes bump in the night. Clouds. And at that stage, there'll be nothing they can do about it. Nothing. Their hands will be tied. Do you understand? These things are going to be giant scorpions. Do you understand? Giant locusts that have the sting of scorpions. And they're going to be given permission to torture mankind for five months with no reprieve. They will seek to find death and not be able. Clats! I told you. You think you can just juggle glasses in the sky, okay? Juggle glasses in the sky. A whole bunch of them throw them into a hurricane. And they'll all just land, eh? Gently on the kitchen counter. Okay, I see you. So what are we supposed to do as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ? Pretty much let you guys know that, okay, it's over. They will open the wormhole. It's what they do. They like children experimenting with mercury that they find in the field. And next thing, they are playing with it in their hands. And next thing, they've got cancer. Like they don't know what they're doing. They like babies. And the Lord did say, forgive them, Father, for they don't know what they do. They don't know. What they're doing is opening up a wormhole and funny things are going to worm in. There's nothing you can do about the fact that one day you're going to be walking among the demons. It's going to happen. That means we're in the last days, girls. The human race that is a class is accelerating the end of days. Today, right now, in Switzerland, like
also get eggs, must just go to waste. And they also want to make sure that you earn nothing and still be happy. They're doing that, okay? And these guys, you can imagine that that's not all. I mean, already that's a little bit classy. And then over and above that, they bring things into our ecosystem and then say, hey, it's an experiment. Really? Are we serious? Are you really, really? Tell me something, South Africa. So there is a power cut right now. Um, and you know that there's been these rolling blackouts going on in South Africa for a while now. But it's gotten especially really bad, like these past few days. Right now, I'm sitting out a power cut that was supposed to end at 8 p.m. And it's currently 10 past 8. So my hopes of it coming back um, have just dwindled. I don't know. It could be back in the next hour, 15 minutes. 45 minutes, I don't know, because these days these park has even happen at funny hours we don't understand, like 13 minutes past 1 or something. Did any of you, like my phone battery just uh, switched off right now because my, my flash, it switched off because my battery's running really low because I can't charge it anyway. 
If at all you were born, I'm like 37 going on 38. I was born in 1984. Did any of y'all ever imagine that life would ever get this hard? Like I'm speaking to those of you who were born in 1984, 85, going all the way into the early 90s, as well as those who were born before me, you know, but having escaped the very height of apartheid. So you don't really know the struggle of apartheid. Do you, you've sort of kind of known a better South Africa than what it is that our parents endured. Did any of you ever expect that your lives would be this hard? Like this hard, like mm -hmm. this hard. Did you ever fathom that your lives would be this difficult? And not even because life is slapping you upside the head because of your own life conditions, but because of your government. Did any of you ever imagine that you would ever struggle with the kind of like governmental corruption that you would find in other African nations? I mean, I know South Africans can be a little bit arrogant, you know, pompous when it comes to the government of our country or how things operate or the electrical infrastructure or anything of that nature we've always just had it a little bit better than the rest of africa for whatever reason it's like we're a little bit more advanced if at all there was a first world country in africa it would be south africa did any of you ever imagine if you went to school in the 2000s like i did in the 90s like i did did you ever imagine that life would ever be this hard where you are languishing not knowing what to do with yourself wanting to pull your hairs out because there's a power cut. Did you ever, ever imagine like lingering, rolling blackouts? I mean, there are other parts of Africa where you will find like power cuts for three, four, five days. Do you know my domestic worker, where it is that she lives, Goval, there have been power cuts for six months on end. So there are certain parts of black communities that don't have power at all. And yet our government is black. Did you ever imagine in your life that you would ever have it in this bad? You know what I think is going on? Except I don't think it. I'm pretty sure that this is what's going on because so many of the other people in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ have seen the same thing. Today is the 5th of July, guys. And there is some kind of an experiment in the world, in Switzerland, by CERN, to pierce into the otherworldly, into some other cosmos, basically using that Hadron Collider thing with their particle physics, whatever they're doing, okay? And it just so happens to come at a time when... In the run-up too, if you were to look at the news right now today across different countries, there are certain things that governments of this world are doing to their people. It's not just the natural disasters that perhaps are an act of God, right? Some of those disasters of which I do believe are an act of man. But yes, fine, let's just give that then credit to the heavens. An act of God, because we're in the last days. So a lot of people are sinning too much against God and the Lord is like handling them with this earth shaking of the earth. Do you understand? But over and above these natural disasters that are on increasing measure, there then are these governmental afflictions happening in countries that you never ever under heaven expected would ever go out like that on their people. Like a lack of supply of water, a lack of supply of, supply of electricity, and it's been ramping up, especially the past month, like a latter part of June, entering into July. There have been these random irresponsibilities being performed by governments across the world. And then on the 5th of July, we then have this experiment by CERN. Do you not think that perhaps maybe they have been charging the hearts of the human race to languish? What happens, guys, when you are in darkness, eh? What happens when these podcasts have been rolling out? Is your spirit not crushed? Does your spirit not get crushed? Like during these podcasts, are you not so discouraged that you don't even want to pray? Are you not so sad and just broken? Like if at all you've already been depressed because of whatever's going on in your life, you get even more depressed during these podcasts. So don't you think they're increasing like suicide numbers? Literally, people are dropping like flies during these podcasts. And they are happening multiple times a day. Sometimes at the weirdest times in the morning. Like how in the world is a power cut beneficial at 2 a.m. in the morning, guys? Because people's lights are already off, at least most of the people. So if, if anybody at all has a light on at 2 a.m. in the morning, it's likely some student lit thing. It's a desk lamp or something. It's nothing hectic. It's not like a whole bunch of consumption of electricity by a heater or whatever. They switch the power on at weird hours. Not during the day. Also doesn't make sense. Because during the day, a lot of times, people aren't using a heater and whatnot. And my lights are off. So you would imagine that if at all they were really trying to relieve light, uh, uh, power stations, the grid, electrical grid or whatever, that they would do it at times when people are consuming most electricity due to the fact that you went to happen in South Africa. So maybe people will be switching on the heaters at around 8 p.m. So it makes sense for the power to be off from 8 to 10. But when the power is off at like 3 a.m. in the morning to 4, to 8 to 6, sort of to 5, what does that even mean? When the power just gets switched off when you're not even expecting it to die, like at 15 minutes past 2 in the afternoon, what in the world is going on there? 
I feel as if though they're trying to bring the unexpected onto us. They're trying to cause us to be discouraged. You know, like I, I had planned my heart for this podcast to feel like at 8 p.m. I had literally planned my heart for the podcast to end at 8 p.m. So because my heart was nice and prepared for the podcast to end at 8 p.m., when 8 p.m. came, I was of course expecting the part to come back on. Well, now as I've been speaking for another five minutes, perhaps it's like 15 minutes past eight right now. I don't know, I'm like, I see meaning. Meaning that I'm languishing extra now. My heart was okay up until 8 p.m., but now I'm sinking. I'm sinking. There's like an exponential decline of my mood generally. Generally. And that sinking inside me is exactly what causes some people to jump off the precipice. Like you could be super suicidal and you will end up taking your life even though you had hope just before the power got taken out. Well, this is how the occult works, you guys. Especially occult secret societies that operate at the layer of governmental officials. They need blood. They need human beings to die. They need to spill ikas labantu so that individual, whatever it is that are there are rituals there that they are doing will take grander effect. So these power cuts, and never mind just power cuts, okay, so Africa is like just one little tiny pin drop in the ocean, all right? It ain't jack in comparison to what's actually going on in the global scale. It's only one tiny piece of the puzzle to the grander scheme of what's going on. These brazen buffoons chilling at the World Economic Forum, busy funding the living data that are funny little experiments on the planet in whatever other capacity. They are trying to make us live lives where we own nothing and apparently are going to be happy alongside it they're doing these irresponsible experiments burning holes into the cosmos bringing demons into the space such entities are not going to prosper to take rooting in the earth if at all there's too much of a fervent prayer uh, prayer praying spirit on the ground by the church of the lord jesus christ and on top of that if people are busy being happy walking in the image of god they can't really do much devils need human beings to be forlorn they need human beings to be melancholic and so basically grow gr like grinding their teeth against each other against god they need the human race saying god doesn't care he doesn't live and there is nothing that will make you feel as though god does not care more than an irresponsible government that's making your life impossible to live you will feel like there is no surviving especially if you are a victim of your own circumstance and you can't get on an airplane and leave to another country and these days there is no country to go to i've been actually in these streets saying like, i look like the uk i want to move and and and, and, and stay in the uk because africa is like hella irresponsible but if you look at the news literally there is there are things flying off the fan everywhere everywhere and it's not just natural disasters it is also also human irresponsibility on the part of our governments here it is that we celebrate roe versus wade getting turned over the other day and then afterwards we have to deal with situations like this i don't know when this power is going to return you guys all i know is that no longer can i rely on my instincts as to when it is likely going to come back because now no more am i getting two like uh, what's this three or four two hour podcasts a day and i've like set my heart to accept it just when i get to a point where i'm accepting two three four hour but like two three to four two hour power cuts per day there then is one that lingers never mind two hours but two and a half hours or two hours 15 minutes because literally they don't even go at the top of the clock anymore you don't know they usually use even numbers even numbers hey eh? like so 8 p.m 6 p.m 4 p.m now you'll be getting a power cut at like 15 minutes past one there is a funny little thing going on guys and when i look at the news i notice this thing that's going on right now it's not just south africa so there is a conglomerated world elite issue. They are literally trying to call us by suicide. Never mind suicide, just to cause a grumbling spirit in the human race generally. When people are sad and, and irritated and uh, uh, agitable, they become a, just ever so slightly more abusive to the next man on the street. So devils need an aggression on the ground in order for them to thrive. So this experiment at CERN, I believe in the run up to it, to prepare the world for it, to basically try to make it succeed, I believe they have done they are doing this to us all across the globe to cause a global community of human beings to basically go low-key crazy because of irresponsible governments and as a result of that then these devils that they're trying to open a portal to at cern will pro will conquer will prosper to come through tina as human beings we have been protected by god there is a, a layer, a, some kind of an opaque one that you can't really see through. Yes, between the human race, between the human realm, this dimension and some other dimensions. And the only way that people pierce or break past these dimensions is if they dabble with funny little things. So if you're into witchcraft, if you're busy playing with the Ouija board in your house, if you're busy summoning spirits in your bedroom, that's the kind of stuff that opens a little bit of a portal in your particular bedroom. So when people are a little bit upset... What they do is energize entities and larger up, large up portals that have already been opened by other people. So basically, I believe that they have they are causing the world to languish and so go irresponsible. Because when wherever there is sorrow, there is a lot of irresponsibility. 
to cause the world to be irresponsible in such a way so that demons can come and just finally lodge amidst us all. But for those guys, they want to make us go crazy. They literally want to make us pull our hairs out of our head. And you think Uti, your president is worth your while to look at. Hey, just, I mean, literally, they give us quick wins, eh? Look at how Cyril Ramaphosa went and announced the other day, Uti, we don't have to wear masks anymore. Just when you're busy jumping up and down on the spot, this stuff happens. This rubbish happens. They give us a fast little one here that we celebrate, and then next thing they slap us with another one. It's called classical conditioning. They're literally making out of us Pavlov's dogs. They want us to eventually do a particular thing by simply frustrating us with yet another particular thing. What are we supposed to do? The only way out of this wicked society is to stop being so wicked and pray. You stand to suffer. Did you ever imagine when in 1994, as a 10 year old girl living in South Africa, that your life would be this hard? Kai, it wasn't this bad, guys. It wasn't this bad. We're thinking we've entered into a new South Africa rainbow nation. And the next thing, 10, 20 years down the line, this is the life that we're living. In Gati, we've gone back 20 years. In Gati, we've gone back 10, 15, 50 years. We are living in the Stone Age. We're living in an African country as South Africans that is not representative to our country. Uh, we, we can't even look in the mirror anymore and see ourselves rightly as we indeed are. It doesn't show anymore who we are. We have lost our former beauty, our former glory, and it's only going to go downhill from here. South Africa is not a country that is struggling so much, this much, that this would be our problem. This should not be a South African problem. I can understand it from in Nigeria. I can understand it chilling in Su South Sudan, guys. I can see how this would be an issue in Ethiopia, but not in South Africa. But guess what it is? There are places where go worse than us. There's no water. There's no water. Electric power cuts lingering well into the months. I mean, the experiments that they are already currently doing in this country, in lowlier neighborhoods like Gorika Singh, they have gone for power without six months. You won't care. A whole six months. And we are out here crying. Over two hour power cuts that sometimes are two and a half or two hours, 45 minutes because they don't even stick to a particular roster or four times a day. It's kind of like that thing. When I want to have not had power for six months, young, and you in, in, in your own individual capacity, wherever you are sitting in South Africa, your friends, your family members and everything, you are opening portals. You are making it possible for them to thrive. To conquer, to take away your home loan, your house, and then say, you own nothing, God, but you are happy because I've given you a house. I've given you a house, Mus. Come on, I'm I've given you a house. It's just enough for you. Shut up and just eat. And if you say anything negative on social media that they don't approve of, that they don't like, then they will take even that house away. Do you not see we are being earmarked for the mark of the beast? Don't you see what wickedness this with these elite are doing? This is not a South African problem, guys. We should not be struggling with things like this, and yet we are. Gifra, right now. I was okay. My spirit was dilly dallying and dancing about in my chest. Do you understand? Waiting for Imtlakasugutubuye at 8 p.m. Manje, Gikwatile, Amvos. And what does anger do? It goes on right ahead to titivate the taste buds of some demons. They are trying to magnify demonic activity in the cosmos so that whatever they're doing at CERN will work. But if we pray, Umasitandaza. As I speak right now, I'm busy joining concerted with some brethren across the world who are praying against whatever's going on on the 5th of July at CERN. So I suspect that Somanza way to Uzo Sisiza. Ngoba, we're standing in the gap for all of you. But once we conquer this CERN thing as a Christian community that is awake in the darkness, the way like right now, the way that I am talking, the way that I am currently talking to you guys right now as I speak in the darkness of night, I am literally like a glowing worm. In the middle of a very dark room. I am standing in the gap for all of you. Well, I mean, at some point as Christians, not just your katala, we all. To stand in the gap for a bunch of people, but busy, but tagatana here, left, right, and center, all over the show. You keep on bewitching each other. You hate one another. You slap one another in. Your jealousy is so extreme that you don't know how to keep your cool in the presence of your friend's prosperity. In the middle of doing that, they're busy taking away your liberties as you speak. I am standing in the gap with other people in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. What are you doing about it? It's like Rale Chagola. Rale Chagola, do you understand? We are literally like ones who are changing the diapers of the human race because they won't grow up, wake up and realize what it is that is going on. The Bible says in God's word, if my people will humble themselves, turn their ear to me, pray, I will heal their land. How about you turn around and pray fast? Little Nineveh, that's what you are, eh? Nineveh, how about you fast and the Lord will not then judge your nations? Otherwise, Tinasya Amba, we're going to leave. As the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, he's going to rapture us. If we have to keep on standing in the gap for a bunch of people that won't repent, understand that the Lord is going to rapture us 
and let all of y'all to endure all of the judgments in the book of Revelation. This is an unnecessary lifestyle to live. Understand that because of global governmental irresponsibility, the world is eventually going to embrace a man called the Antichrist because no one will like their governments anymore. Are we not headed there at the speed of lightning? If you want to delay the return of the Lord because the return of the Lord is a frightful day for those of you who don't know him, then you better repent fast. Get on your knees and cover the ears and eyes of your children from that stupid application called TikTok. That's what you need to do. I'm signing out in Christ's name. I hope you've been edified. Get this rubbish going on in South Africa. I can't, I can't believe. Do you understand? Past 8 p.m. The power is a nini. I don't know when the power is going to come back. All I know is that I'm agitated. And I'm Christian. What about your agitation who has no Holy Spirit? How much more in trouble are you than me? Hey, Nyapuma, guys. Bye. Hi, how's it? It's me again. Uh, Wow. So... I just found out that this power cut apparently is going to end at half past 10 at night. So here it is that I'm speaking at 8.30, thinking that maybe it'll come back in the next, I don't know, hour. Not hour, so half an hour. And then I found out that I need to wait another two hours before the power will return. This is a new low. This is a new low, South Africa. I mean, like, just think about it. There was a power cut today earlier at 12 p.m. in the, uh, in the afternoon right and i was like okay whatever do you do you and i thought there's gonna be another one for two hours and now here is one for a literal four hour four hour period and you can trust with every bone in your body that there's gonna be another one in the wee hours of the morning i suffer from those wee hour in the morning type power cuts why because me i do my edits i do my edits for my youtube videos uh, during those power cuts i am so backlogged literally i upload my videos daily on youtube and i am backlogged by something like just under two weeks just under two weeks for a daily person who uploads a daily youtuber to be backlogged by two weeks basically means I must either throw my work out or going forward, I need to upload two videos a day. Try upload two batches of work a day with all the amount of editing that it takes in order to finish a YouTube video and see how far you get. I want to catch up. Today's the 5th of July. This particular video, this work that I'm doing, I'm going to upload it today because i wanted to be real time i would have been real time if south africa did not decide to take away literally eight hours of my day just chop it up hey eh? pac-man gobble it away gobble it away if south africa did not decide to gobble eight hours of my work i would be on time or at least behind by just a day or two instead i am backlogged my content is literally not moving i still need to add some special effects blah 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 you would know if at all you do videos that is the story of my life. You would imagine that a, a president of a country would be happy to eradicate an issue like that because it's messing with his own country's economy. They don't care. They don't care. They don't care even in the slightest. This is what it is that we're dealing with. Four hour power cuts after you've already been endured through a two hour one. This is the kind of stuff that makes people that are already, like I said, at the edge of the precipice to jump. This here is a suicide mission for the country. This is a let's see how many people are finally going to pull the trigger type power cut. This is a let's see how many people are finally going to hang on a rope type power cut. This is a let's see how many people are going to in the middle of their frustration with there being no power. Schnaff enough lines of cocaine that they might OD. This is a human sacrifice freaking power cut. They're trying to kill us with these power cuts. I am so frustrated by them because i don't have any other option to get out of this i am a persecuted christian this is the life that i live Gunjena. if there's no power well dollar law girl just deal but understand that i'm not the only person in these conditions on top of that it's winter it's winter it's winter so it's freezing everywhere for everyone and they are enduring us through eight hours of knowing our way gobbling like pack frigging man our day and living in Gati, we are still in pre-electricity planet. Our president is sitting there on some, I mean, what can we do? This is a power cut crisis. They've been saying that this is a power cut crisis literally for longer than we can even count the number of years on our 10 fingers and toes. If it's a crisis, why aren't you dealing with it? If it's a crisis, why not? You call something a problem because somebody's actually looking for a solution, is it not? Yeah. Well, this is not a problem they're looking for a solution for. So if they don't want a solution for this problem, what exactly are they trying to do? The fact that there is a problem without a solution evidences that the solution is the problem for them.
They are literally enduring us through all of this because they imagine it's the solution to all the world's problems, to the overpopulation crisis, to the overlament crisis. They are causing people to riot all over the show, fight, break, but like buildings, burn buildings. They are causing everybody to butt their heads so they can minimize themselves. They're causing people to cull, cull, C-U-L-L, like your, you know, removal of an animal from the face of the earth. They're causing people to cull each other and themselves. They are inducing suicide. This is what this is. And I see it plainly, plainly, like I can gawk at the palm of my hand in broad daylight. What about you? They are killing us with these power cuts. They are causing morbid depression, clinical psychosis to a point of murder and suicide. This is what your president is doing to you. He has given your country over to an experiment that is global to see if they can't minimize the numbers of the human race through some other induced strategy. It is psychological manipulation in the worst way. They are making us butt heads in the dark. Your only solution is repentance. I hope to be able to upload this guy on and where they're going to bring the power, cut, the power back on again. Literally two hours. I got to wait. I got to wait to share this work it better be worth my while galagarpenta i'm signing out on christ's name crank k bye dinjata dawing otherwise known as drunk dogs it's 21 41 guys funny little hour funny little hour only now the power just came back on 21 41 arbitrary and you think cern is not a concern for you okay good night Hi, I thought I was done. The power was off from 6 p.m. up until 21.40. Three hours and 40 minutes. Seriously? That, 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 that's your roster? For real? Okay. Thank you, son. Don't look at this time on the microwave and be deceived. The microwave's time is not accurate precisely because of the power cuts. This year is a mistake. Get 21.43 as I speak. Because it was so good. I could write, I could write. If you like a halloween believer, we dig in Kiona Guemo DSTV 2143. Come on, we are 2143 these days. No longer top of the hour. All right, sharp. Like, whatever. These people are experimenting with their African lives. They can afford to bring the power back on when it's absolutely necessary. They can afford to bring it on permanently, but they just won't. So they give us three hour, 41 minute power cuts, as if though that makes any sense. Good night, guys. I'm officially done. Or maybe Vanana Hore, like returning the power earlier than expected, is a tantamount of giving us my legger to reward the kids that hung out all the way to the end. I kid you not, it's totally like the Squid Game, guys. It's like the Squid Game. It's like whoever gets to the end of the power cut gets to live another day. It's literally like the Squid Game. They're putting us through some incredibly satanic, like hugely nefarious strategy to see who in the world is going to be a cut above Liseras, the rest. It's like they're giving us sweeties at the end of a long, lethargic battle. If you can stay alive long enough, after holding your breath underwater, you get to be rewarded with the next stage of the Squid Game. May the odds be ever in your favor. Whoever wins these Hunger Games are the ones that get to live among the elite. So maybe that is why they brought the power back on before that four hour mark or that four and a half hour mark. They schedule a power cut for three hours, for two hours, for 10 hours. And then they bring the power back after five hours, 14 minutes. So that whoever made it to five hours, 14 minutes can feel like they've been relieved, reprieved. And that the game master is actually really decent and kind. That the game master is actually lenient. That the game master, it doesn't really want to push you through it. Doesn't really want to push you through it. Doesn't really want to put you through it. But I mean, you know, it is what it is in order for us to cull the planet so that the Georgia guy stones may be fulfilled and us be left with 500 million people on a planet that currently has 8 billion how about we just kill them all and whoever makes it to whatever time we decide to bring the power back on makes it whoever gets there gets to be part of the elite they're playing with us how in the world do you bring power back on after three hours 41 to 43 minutes when you promised us a four hour power cut it's like whoever has died in this time it's like whoops a dollar law 
I guess you didn't make it. But to those of you who thrived and strove, huh, I will reward you with 20 minutes extra of light a day. It's the Hunger Games, yo. Don't say I didn't warn you. Don't say it! They've literally put us in a battlefield, yeah, survival of the fittest. This is Darwinism at its exquisite height, okay? I am currently transferring all of my content from my iMovie, right? Look at all of those tiny little clips that I have to edit. All of these, yeah, 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 yeah. Not iMovie, but my image capture. I'm moving it from my cell phone device onto my desktop. And they are all of these videos. Can is the countation. Let's count together, little children. One, two, three, four, five six seven eight eight videos that i am backlogged in that i still need to edit starting with this one that i'm yet to even get around to get to, 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 to starting i can't do any of that when the power is cut i work on a plug-in mac computer and so therefore without power pilling them i'm eight days backlogged this current work that i'm doing now i'm going to upload it in real time today as at the 5th of july when sen is busy experimenting with the whole planet Ne? I'm going to upload it today. So as at today's update, understand that this is work that is lagging from the days past and I haven't been able to upload it on time. But one of they are going to hell for eternity and you are allowing them to dangle you about the flames of hell as they're going there. It's like they're awesome. How about we go and swim in like molten lava? But hey, guess what? It's so much fun that I want the whole human race to come with me. They know what they're doing is nefarious, nefarious and satanic. A lot of people, when they pull like random stunts on the earth, think about right, that they're big, better people than the rest than the next man on the street. Their righteous works are like filthy rags. So they think that they're a good person and they're going to heaven. These people know they're not good. They know they're evil. They think the human race is made up of a bunch of like wormy, disgusting creatures that need to be culled. They have a goal in mind. And they have put the planet on a Darwinic, basically cesspool. They've made us compete for scraps of resources until we either kill each other or kill ourselves. Either way, they bring down their numbers. All this is content that I have been sharing, trying to get all of y'all edified, and I can't even get around to doing it fast enough. I hate that I've been born in South Africa, but these days, it's really actually so bad that one ought to hate just being born on Earth at all. They're going to hell forever. With them. They believe they have got a place in heaven, in the heaven that they have created in their own image, the heaven that belongs to Satan. They go to random funny places under the ocean and celebrate what it is that the devil has shown them as a city or something that apparently should not exist because it's underwater. Like they do funny stuff, funny stuff. Our presidents, celebrities, big fat chunky people that are watching all of us scrummage for scraps are struggling. Do you seriously think that when we have a 3 hour 41 minutes power cut that Cyril Ramaphosa is in the dark? Oh heck no. That is definitely not happening. Forever. These people are going to hell and they're trying to take you there with you, with them. The sad thing is they will have lived a cushy, luxurious life where they have no power cuts in their own little tiny planet, portion of the planet. Whereas you will have lived a hard knock life for us. It's a hard knock life for us. Instead of treating, we get tricked. Instead of kisses, we get kicked. It's a hard knock. You will have lived a hard knock life and then still go to hell? Are you serious? Like what? As if though this place is not hellish enough. You live a rough life where you get to endure three hour, 41 minute power cuts. And then you get given a small little sweetie at the end of it because you did not endure the full four and a half hours. And then afterwards you go to hell. You bewitch each other. Having gained nothing from your sorcery. The only people that gain from witchcraft are the ones at the very top. They're eventually going to hell, but at least they get to say, I lived a good life on earth. What about you? What is the point? Just repent, man. Hoping that the power cut that is inevitably going to come somewhere in the wee hours of the morning does not happen before I'm at least done editing this video. This one over here that I need to get out of the way. The rest is born whenever the power cut allows. I am backlogged for Nyongo. Repent, guys. Bye. Oh, I keep thinking I'm done. Here's another kicker, okay? Because of this power cut, 
go and read the news really i ain't lying i'm not about that business the dog hotel doctors but they think we're ready to me we're not friends we're not friends this government needs to understand we're not friends the world economic forum must understand we're not friends the world economic forum must understand we're not friends no kids are aware how about we're waiting we're not okay listen with a keen ear doctors in hospitals even some of the most baddest hospitals in the game like as in private care they are losing patients in their numbers numbers because of this parkhead crisis and you think they're not trying to call the human race you think they are not trying to call the human race gangothi labantu are not trying to call the human race they are deliberately cutting power for hours on end multiple times a day such that the generators of very established businesses are no longer able to keep up with the demand the generator insurance that a lot of these hospitals have got literally a backup plan that they have is set apart for a park at maybe like one every three days or for two hours but if it's every day for like today almost eight hours i understand it's going to run out of whatever firepower it is that is usually found in generators and in hospitals doctors are struggling to keep people alive because of a lack of power imagine going through some kind of a heart transplant a kidney transplant and then go power cut imagine there being an unexpected power cut like yaga jeko that is three hours and a couple of minutes long all right that you don't see coming so even when you schedule your surgery you can't do it based on a reliable load shedding roster you lose patience it's like they say dare get sick i dare you i'm bam you go la go go get sick you go and, and get into a car accident I beg I, I beg go. I beg go go get yourself into a car accident. I dare you. I dare you to go and get yourself in a heart attack. You you dare ro. Go get a brain aneurysm. I dare you to get a stroke. Because on that day when you dare when you literally call the bluff of those random buffoons what happens is that you die there are so many of us on the planet or at least they think there are way too many of us that is absolutely necessary get gauge literally put it in your brain that Christ said go out there and multiply be fruitful so to be many is what God intended for the last days for the world at large and yet they think that we are overpopulated on a planet that has got so much open landscape open land just open arid land just drive to the country in any country that you're at there's more than enough space for all of us and more than enough farm land for all of us literally there is more than enough but these people are busy saying that tina tina out here in these streets are too many so what are they saying you better not get yourself in a car accident during a time when we're doing power cuts how about you stay home really be safe don't you dare od on any pills don't you dare take medication that a doctor has not prescribed to you do not do anything that's going to cause a doctor to have to pump your stomach at the hospital don't you dare get yourself at a nightclub where you will drink too much and nothing you're going to have to go to the spin off spin version of Baragwanath hospital the section ebara ungazo dagwa lamtano and then die from alcohol poisoning because you will die even though whatever you're going through is survivable uzo boda cuz why in the world did you dare get sick literally this is a darwinic strategy of survival of the fittest do you understand during the time when they're busy saying it's red light green light for us in these quick games when it's green light you cannot when the light goes green be unable to run you cannot when the light goes green be in a wheelchair you cannot in the when the light goes green having just been in a car accident and you need the jaws of life to extract you out of there you cannot when the light goes green be in any position other than one where you got to run and then over and above you running because the light is green you may very potentially still be moving when the light goes red so it's almost as if though if you dare get it's sick in the season if you catch it as needs disease if you sniff if you like araba have a flu sore on your bottom lip my goodness are you at a disadvantage so nina entanda it called the sick istrata ntana ma pedest and coursing get it logo nglu because in the season doctors are not going to be able to save your life even though whatever it is that you're struggling with is survivable our hospitals are choking up under the pressure they're buckling up under pressure because of these power cuts and you think these people are not on a strategy to kill us It's a worldwide issue. If a hospital doesn't have water, it can't save lives. If a hospital does not have electricity, it can't save lives. And we are currently undergoing a worldwide issue, a situation, a serious pandemic. It's a pandemonious circumstance right now where these basic resources are being taken from areas where it is that people can uh, not afford to survive without them. And so they're dropping like flies. They're dying. They are unable to rescue people that entirely can make it women giving birth in hospitals where there is insufficient water so doctors can't wash their hands understand that the good old fashioned days where most of the women upon giving childbirth died 
those days are coming back. They're doing that to us. They are doing that to us. They're clogging up robots. Do you understand? They're clogging up traffic. So when the power gets cut, traffic lights don't work. Don't work. So whenever there's an emergency where a person is deliberately is trying to take their own pregnant wife to the hospital because the ambulance is not getting to them fast enough, they cannot just, like a regular ambulance, go on the opposite traffic lane, go on the opposite side of traveling traffic and on the highway. They have got to stay stuck in that traffic. So people are having birth, are giving birth to babies in cars, in unsanitary conditions. Some of them are dying, heat strokes, all different kinds of things. They are literally chock blocking the planet to see if they can't cull them naturally in a way that is going to look like they had nothing to do with it. They are frustrating resources, trying to prevent them from getting the people that they might die. Only look at what's going on in the Tigray region in Ethiopia. Humanitarian aid by the United Nations and other bodies that are, what do you call this, and, and other donation bodies, is unable to get to the people because there are these apparent militia groups that are standing in the way of humanitarian aid getting to these people. Who, if you look at those people, what are they? They're the famished. They're starving. They're already literally five seconds away from dying. Go and ask Debra Peta. They are five seconds away from dying. And so really, let them die. There's too many of them anyway. They have no compassion for babies that are hungry. No compassion for their moms. They have no compassion for each individual human soul. And you're actually in the streets of Bizu Dudes in Johannesburg, all cushed up in your stupid little apartment. You are busy bewitching friends and family members. Your jealousy is causing you to trip up people's entire careers. And yet your government is busy trying to kill your next door neighbor's baby because that baby ought not have been conceived in the first place. All the best with continuing and sinning human race. When these elite are doing this to us, they are essentially pinky and the brain and they can be snuffed out really quickly because really, who tries to take over the world when they're not really God? But if at all you don't stand in the gap for your countries, if you don't stand in the gap for your children, if you don't stand in the gap for the futures or the inheritances of your tomorrow generation. Generation, I mean, right now we're in Gen Z. I don't know what gets more than Gen Z starting at AA again. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Literally, Z suggests that we're in the last generation ever of the human race. I feel like I'm even fighting a losing battle. I feel as though it's pointless for me to even try and snatch some people out of the flames of hell because after all, we are at Gen Z. I don't know. I don't know. But it's worth your while to try and have Gen Z's even in and of themselves have grandchildren. I don't know. It's worth a while. Is this planet not worth saving? Is it not worth saving? The only way around this, guys, is to repent. Because these guys are using spiritual weapons against us. And in the absence of you literally wearing spiritual armor in and of yourselves, you're not going to conquer Pinky and the frigging brain. Pinky and the brain are going to prosper to take over the world one day, despite being rodents, because you will have fallen asleep and allowed your turn to get stolen away by your indiscretion, because all you can think about, sitting as a millennial, sitting as a generation X, sitting as a generation whatever might be the earlier paper, baby boomers, you're sitting where you're sitting, even older as you are watching society fizzle away doing nothing but grieve in your senile geriatric years that you lost your youth and so now you are jealous of your grandchildren there is no dignity in this world anymore nobody has piety anymore nobody has sense anymore to a point where mothers are throwing their own daughters under the bus because they're too envious of their precious figures what is going on with you you're being taken over by a global elite that are experimenting on you and then throwing scraps at you for surviving at least past the three hour 41 minute mark Next time, it's going to be six hours, 47 minutes. Next time, then, after that, it'll be three days. Are you going to survive a three-day power cut? Who in the world needs blood in a hospital and survives a three-hour power cut? Even if you can survive Naayo, die three-hour power cut, can you survive not being taken to hospital on time after getting in a car accident? I don't think so. Literally, these people are deliberately killing us. I don't know why it's not obvious to more people, but then, again, perhaps people like me are here to highlight those indiscretions. I'm signing out in Christ's name officially. I hope you've been blessed. Bye. One last thing that I just want to throw in your general direction. I do apologize. I can be loquacious, plus there's a lot on my mind, so bear with me. The situation with my Mac, like right now, this situation, then the one way I cannot uh, edit my content unless there is electricity. There is a backlog, and it's seven days worth of backlog. This backlog is spiritual food i'm edifying people i'm going through a journey i'm on a fast it's a 21 day fast and i'm trying to conquer something in it and i've been recording my daily struggle and there have been people that have been watching me faithfully through it all but they're not getting real-time edification so essentially they're like ones who are starving hey when we give the spiritual milk or the spiritual food to the people out there that are happy to receive it we are known as ones who are feeding the sheep well you can completely translate my particular struggle with getting all of these videos published all of these videos shared if anything you see this video over here i want to it's one that i did two days ago 
And I've, I've been feeling a little bit silly to try and share it only when I get to this day because it was relevant to that particular day. It's another day where I'm lamenting about Parker. It's like, rarely ever will I come to you guys and share a nugget or two. Wearing doogies and looking all morningy. Like I even might potentially still have halitosis from having not yet brushed my teeth. Rarely ever do I come to my ministry in that state unless there is a power cut. So what you're looking at over here, me looking like a little bit of a mangyew, uh, is the rare occasion where there is no power. The rest of the days when I come, I look like what it is that you're looking at. I, I actually go out of my way to try and look good. Do you understand? Uh, so that I can be aesthetically pleasing sufficiently receivable enough by a very uh carnal generation a uh, very i want it i want it now ornate they just love to receive random stimuli into their flesh before they will even click on something i'm trying to thumbnail like impressify people but as opposed to it being a thumbnail it's me so rarely ever do i come in like doogies and whatnot so when i'm in it it is because of these power cards i am currently publishing and hoping that it's going to get out of my way real fast so i can combine it with this work that you might hear the laments of i think it was two days ago it was two days ago because this is yesterday's work immediately yesterday's work um this is the beginning this is the end and it all were, is going in chronology like that I am therefore unable to feed the sheep because I'm a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. So really, if I'm coming here, I'm trying to edify people in Jesus Christ. All right. I'm not able to feed sheep precisely because of a backlog created deliberately by my country. My country. Does that sound like anything else that you can think of guys going on out here in this world? Come on. I'll give you two seconds to think one, two, time is up. The food crisis, the food shortage crisis in the world's superpower. It's bad enough, y'all, that there is a super food, sorry, a, 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 a food crisis in developing nations that are really struggling to get their day in court. Do you understand? Like many of the countries in Africa. But when you've got a food shortage in the world superpower, who is our reserve currency? And so basically, can nobody move if the United States don't move? Uh, we have got a deliberate attempt at human lives here. Deliberate attempt. I am like a supply chain interruption. This here is a supply chain interruption. It is a causally connected interruption of the work that I am trying to get to people out there by a situation caused by the government. It's not because of my own laziness. It's not because of me not wanting to sit literally the hours out and do the edits. I've been wanting to do them daily, but I'm not getting around fast enough to doing them because I am in and of myself unable to get them out. This is a food shortage phenomena gawking at you. They are deliberately causing problems so they can achieve their nefarious agenda. Not only are they, they're not, not only is this analogical or depictive of the current supply chain issues chilling in the most wealthy nation in the world, it is also depictive of the current small to medium enterprises lackluster state of prosperity in this country. South Africa has got the highest rate of small to medium enterprises failure, rate of failure in the world. You know why? Because SMEs are unable to get their work out on time because of the power cuts. This is my work. This is my way of trying to ga gain some kind of traction on YouTube. I am trying to contribute to the economy of this country. Even though YouTube is an international platform, it is more American than it can be South African. It is an American platform that can enable, nonetheless, a South African to make money. And I am living in South Africa. So therefore, what money I make, I bring into the South African economy, meaning that I'm trying to bless an economy that does not want me to bless it. I am trying to participate to the gross domestic product of a, a country that is not interested I should participate in such a thing as that. I am trying to create employment for myself in a country that has kicked me out of its employment um, percentage of people. It does not want to rehire me. It does not want to take me back in and uh, like ensconce me in its bosom. And so I am going on an international platform to make money that I might serve the needs of the economy of the very country that makes sure I can never work again. So even when I am trying to go against the grain of this defeatist country, it is still making sure that I can't do it fast enough. Do you not see, ladies and gentlemen, because I suspect men are here anyway, because my ministry is for women. But this particular point is really relevant to everybody. Like, you don't need to be discriminating at this point. There is a big, fat, chunky problem in the world right now with deliberate causation of unemployment, deliberate causation of hungry in countries that should, of hunger, in countries that should not 
struggle with hunger deliberate causation of frustration in people to a point of inducing psychoses in society that can lead to things like murder and suicide and the end result of it is to cause us to cull each other by a certain percentage and if we find our own peace they will then maybe start to have ramp up what it is that they're prepared to do to us first they invest random untested bill gate juices in our bodies right random untested medical experiments are coming into our bodies all in the name of like um, national or international security then they want to give over our health liberties to the world health organization literally right over the sovereignty of our country's medical decisions to some body that is funded by one random guy that has not ever for a single day ever gone to med school ever gone to pharmacy school never did biochemistry and yet he is busy talking about the biochemical constitution of the planet and how it is that it's so unhealthy that he needs to come and intervene a techno giant is busy making world decisions on a medical matter despite not having the right um expertise his name is a bill gates do you understand that is what is going on on the planet at large right now they feed us toxins into our bodies following which they then say ah look some of them have got a really strong immune system against these toxins so what we're gonna have to do is just make them kill each other then nothing works better than psychological manipulation nothing works better than gaslighting nothing works better than causing a person to think that they're losing their mind and so kill another man even though really we made them do it these are spiritual weapons we have got to conquer them in a spiritual way yo we gotta pray we have to pray we have to come together in concert and in the absence of doing that the supply chain issues that you're looking at right now the empty shelves that you're seeing in the world's superpower the empty shelves that you're also now seeing in Garabo's youtube channel because she cannot get the food to the people fast enough they're only gonna get worse i dread to see how much bigger how much longer my little snake-like queue of videos is going to get over the next coming days because of these power cuts and you think that your next door neighbor's a gorgeous baby girl is your biggest problem because your her daughter is prettier than yours they are literally making you focus on futile things you are so jealous of each other that you're pulling one another's hairs out while these people are doing this to you they're keeping you nice and distracted with the flashy ornate natures of next door neighbors tiktok famous sons and daughters to a point where you will go on right ahead and backstab your next door neighbor to get at her because you're jealous of her while your shelves are empty and you can't even buy food let alone afford it you can't even buy it even if you have the money that's what they're doing keep them distracted make them futile cause them to rant chant up and down go and break down statues cause them to massacre one another over futile things cause them to complain that they just repealed abortion in the largest kind of superpower in the world and then after they've done all that guess what guess what guess what we will then go and hook them up with some kind of a gas in the sky to forget that we're killing them Mm, mm, mm. repent guys it's worth your while to do so nan gindi i warned you gindi warni shile i warned you okay it's my job i love you in christ's name this will officially be the last video i hope so of the day bye bye nice.